I'm moving away from pixel art for my next commercial game. Pixel art has been a staple in indie games for years, but it is time to explore new art styles. If you are a die-hard pixel art fan like myself, stick around, you might find this enlightening. Let's dive into it. Pixel art has a rich history from classic days of Super Mario Bros to indie darlings like Undertale, but here's the thing. What was once a technical necessity has turned into the most common aesthetic choice for indie games. But is it the only way to go? Part 1. Nostalgia. But for who? Most die-hard pixel art fans will say that pixel art evokes nostalgia. Yes, that's correct. But for who? I'm sorry to say, but the PlayStation 2 was released 25 years ago. So unless you are more than 30 years old, you grew up with 3D and sharp 2D games. That's why most people don't even remember how pixel art was originally intended to look on a CRT monitor. For most players 20 years old or younger, pixel art just means low budget. Not necessarily bad, but low production value. This is sad, but it is true. That's why even the AAA and high budget productions that go with pixel art are considered indie, because people think it is low budget. I'm looking at you, David the Diver. So the question is, do you want your game to look low budget do you want your game to look like it has low production value? I'm not saying there is a right or wrong answer here. Perhaps you want your game to be perceived as low budget. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just something to have in mind when pricing and when marketing your game. Part 2. The bad of pixel art. Now let's be honest, pixel art is not all sunshine and rainbows. Crafting pixel art can be incredibly time consuming. Every pixel matters and getting things just right can feel like a never-ending task. Sure, when it's done well, it looks amazing. But as a solo dev or a small team, the hours you spend can feel disproportionate. In case you're interested, I made a whole video about techniques for improving and producing pixel art more effectively. The techniques I teach can help, but they still require a significant amount of effort. Then we have animation. With other 2D styles, you have many techniques that make animation less labor-intensive. With pixel art, animation is a nightmare, and it can be impossible to scale for a small team or for a solo dev. Picture this. 10 characters, 8 directions, 4 animations. You have 1,600 frames. If you take 1 hour to draw a frame from start to finish, this can easily be a whole year of full-time work. Now, imagine you want an alternative attack animation. Why are we still this here? is crazy. This is crazy. No wonder Just why December. Secrets of Grindia took 13 years to be made. <gasps> Secrets of Grindia is an old school action RPG developed by two folks. Another example of how long it can take is Adam C. Yunus here on YouTube. Adam has been working on his game called Insignia for more than 7 years now. And from what I could grasp, there is still a long way to go with art assets. And that's why most of the pixel art games we are nostalgic about were actually AAA productions. Think about it. Chrono Trigger, Tactics Ogre, Castlevania, Metroid, and so on. These are all AAA titles. And modern, good-looking pixel art games cost millions to make. Like Sea of Stars, for example. How much does it cost to have 8 plus artists working on a project with this level of pixel art? Another challenge is standing out, of course. The indie market is flooded with cheap pixel art games and many look strikingly similar. By cheap, I don't mean they are bad, it is just that they don't have the time or the millions to pay a team of artists to make something like a AAA pixel art, so they end up all looking generic and the same. Unless you have a groundbreaking art direction or a unique twist, it is easy to get lost in the crowd. There is a fine line between homage and redundancy. Part 3. Alternative Retro Styles Let's talk about alternatives. If you are targeting the nostalgia of a wider audience, then retro goes beyond pixel art. For example, the PS1 era with its low-poly 3D graphics offers a unique aesthetic. Lately, I've seen a growing number of games that evoke nostalgia for PS1, PS2 and Nintendo 64 era games. 
Dread Illusion, Arctic Eggs, Legend 64, Tunic, Crow Country, Jupiter Hell, Mullet, Mad Jack, and many others. Think Final Fantasy VII, Silent Hill, Ocarina of Time, Metal Gear Solid, and so on. These jagged edges, low res textures are nostalgic in their own right, and they offer a nostalgic feeling for a wider pool of players. Then there's hand draw 2D, and there's also vector graphics. Gris, Hollow Knight, Coot of the Lamb, Darkest Dungeon, Slay Day's Fire, Night in the Woods, Bear and Breakfast, and so on. These 2D styles can bring a game's world to life in a way that is not associated with low budget, low effort, so it can be an interesting choice. 2D art is always labor intensive, but in some ways it is easier than pixel art. In one of my past devlogs, I talk about how it was easier to make a game in a hand drawn style versus pixel art. Part 4 Which style will I pick for my next game? So, what's next for my game? This time, I'm leaning towards a combination of 3D and hand draw 2D without the hetero appeal. There will be no crunchy, no low res textures, at least not this time. And my reasoning is this allows me for creative freedom while still keeping production manageable in terms of cost and time. My game will not appeal to audiences looking specifically for retro games. On the other hand, it might appeal to everybody else who plays games in its genre. There's a link in the description in case you want to learn more about my next commercial project. Think of it as a Slade Aspire meets Stardew Valley. I know it's a weird combination, but it will be interesting. Conclusion Pixel art isn't going anywhere, but it is not the only way to bring indie games to life. If you still think pixel art is the way to go, drop a comment down below and let's chat about it. In my case, I'm excited to explore new styles and see where they take my next project. If you're curious about the process and the final results, hit that subscribe button and follow along. See you in the next video.